Hello, Bronwyn Lund here from Bronholm Tours. I'm on the island of Bronholm, way in the north near the town of Ellinger. And uh, this is the third film in a series of four films about the ra round churches of Bronholm. And today we're going to uh, have a look at um, Ols Church in the town of Olska. So I really hope you enjoy the tour. We're just going to walk um, around the church to start with, just so that you can get a idea of how the church looks from the outside. It was actually built at the same time as the other churches, the other round churches on Bonholm. And it's the tallest of the four round churches, but it's not the biggest. And it has a very interesting buttress, which we will uh, turn in a, in a few seconds and uh, be able to um, examine more closely, uh, which I haven't seen on any of the other churches before, which sort of has an opening in the side. It's hidden by the trees. I just enjoy the cemetery. The um, bell tower is uh, on the edge of the cemetery to our left and it's actually quite a short bell tower but the thing that's interesting about this bell tower is um, that it is actually performing a function as a gatehouse you can see the gate next to the bell tower and that's how the bell tower would have been used um, with the other churches as well we don't see that with the other churches because the graveyard has been extended outside the perimeter of the church and so um, it's sort of difficult to see how it would have been used as a gatehouse but here we actually have the example and there we can see that buttress I was talking about that uh, has the um, <coughs> gap in it and uh, I'm really not sure why there's a gap. There's nothing uh, in the information that I've read um, about it. But uh, I might just um, stand here and read a little bit about the uh, exterior. So, Sankt Olskirke or St. Olaf's Church is also known as Olska Church. It's a 12th century round church located in the village of Olska, four kilometres south of Ellinger on the Danish island of Bornholm. Built in the Romanesque style and reaching three storeys high, it has from the beginning consisted of a round nave, a core and an apse. Like Bornholm's other media medieval churches, St. Ols was built in the 12th century. It was named after the revered King Olaf II of Norway, who fell at the Battle of Stiklestil in 1030. In 1378, it was documented as Ecclesia Sancti Olai, or Church of St. Olaf. The church first belonged to the Archbishopric of Lund, then came under the Danish crown at the time of the Reformation. In the 19th century, it became fully independent. The highest of Bonholm's four round churches, rising 13 metres from its base to the top of the conical roof, the church is built of local granite fieldstone with limestone door frames. Standing on a hilltop at a height of 112 metres above sea level, it was built as a stronghold to defend the surrounding area. The openings in the wall on the upper storey were designed for shooting or throwing stones at the enemy. There was also a platform with a parapet which was used for defensive purposes. The church was also equipped with a hanging gallery supported on beams projecting from the walls of the round tower. The structure consists of a barrel vault and a central column bearing the upper floors. The height of the cylindrical nave, 13 metres, is almost exactly the same as that of Ustalar's church. There are small extensions from the nave into the small core and tiny apse. The central column provides solid support for the first two storeys, but is more slender in the loft where it bears the more recent roofing. The porch is probably medieval, while the two buttresses to the west were added in 1825 to guard against collapse. The bell tower dates from the end of the 18th century. Restoration work was carried out in 2004. So let's go in and check it out from the inside. So the porch is actually much uh, 
older than uh, the porches on the other churches, which is interesting. So that gives us a flavour of what these porches would have looked like before the original ones were torn down off the, uh, off the other, off the other um, churches. And here again we have uh, the list since Reformation of uh, all the priests or vicars who have been responsible for the church um, right up until um, 2009, it looks like. So the current vicar has been here for quite a long time, 10 years. And we have the rune stones again on the left and right. There isn't any information about what it says on them. There's a very steep staircase that goes up into the chancel and uh, defensive structures of the church. I'm not going to go up there. Um, it's very similar to uh, the inside of um, New Lars Church. Very similar design. So if you want to get an idea of what it looks like up there, you can uh, check out that, um, that film. So it's a much simpler and much smaller church than Oosterlaas, but it's interesting that it's actually the same height as Oosterlaas. Right, so we'll just go out the side gate and uh, do a little five minute walk out into the fields of surrounding the church, just so you can get a feel for what sort of environment the church is sitting in. And over here to the right would have been the vicarage it's not a very big vicarage, not compared to the vicarages at the other churches, but it's a lovely whitewashed building nonetheless. And uh, just over the field to the left is um, a fine view of the sea. So the church's height would have meant that um, they would have had a good view of the sea and any approaching enemies. You can just see the sea off into the distance. So that was a tour of St. Paul's Church, Round Church, one of three round churches, one of four round churches on Boyd Holm and one of eight. Bronwyn Lund from Bronholt Tours signing off. Bye for now.